approach of the chef. Hi, we're here with we're your podcasters, and we're here with the school chef, Mr. Cleo. We are here to interview him about the foods that he makes, the food that he makes, and um, and how the kitchen works and dim sum. <laughs> Okay, so in Panama we have uh, a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. um, in Spanish it's called Mercado de Abasto. So it used to be in Curundú, um, and now we moved it to, uh, to a different location. Um, if you're going through El Puente Centenario, mm -hmm. going to the beach, if instead of from Puente Las Americas you take Centenario, then on the left side you're gonna see this huge place that has um, that is the new market, farmer's market. And it's very interesting because everything is new. We have new fridge, new everything. So me and my staff, we go once a month, once every two months, we go to the farmer's market and we start looking at the ingredients, depending on the menu we have. And um, we go with one of our providers and which, what the company does is that under everything, like I like our, I like our watermelons this way, and I want them this size, this weight. How green, or how, you know, how how do you want them inside? You tell them, and then each each day, each morning, um, they <laughs> each morning they bring it to us. So every day we make a request. So we don't have to go to the farmers market ourselves every day. They, they are the one that provides us with that, but everything comes fresh from the farmer's market. What healthy foods do you cook? Well, healthy food is an interesting concept. Um, what is healthy for one might not be healthy for another one. There's a lot of different, there's a lot of different foods around the world in different cultures. And each one of them has, has a way of cooking and has a way of you know, determining what healthy food is. Definitely, if we eat too much fried food or processed foods, we know already that's not healthy. However, using a little bit, um, using a little bit of fried foods in an entire meal, it's not bad at all. So, we have to, what, what we cook here, to answer your question, is mostly home cooked meals. You know, whatever you can expect in in your homes, you know, made with good ingredients, safely, and with a lot of love. That's what you can expect us to cook for you guys. What is like, what is the hardest thing you ever cooked before? Hardest thing? Well, cooking, I don't feel that it's that hard. I feel that cooking is, it comes to me very easily, thus I'm a chef. Um, it's very straightforward to me. There are te techniques that we were taught in culinary school that take a longer time, you know, are more intricate. But in general, I think that, you know, like sometimes, like for example, there's this, there's this pork, an Italian pork, it's called porchetta. That you have to grab the skin of the pork and you have to make little, little holes and then you have to roll it up and then with the twine you have to like oh, you have to like um twine it i guess twine it yeah like you gotta you gotta tie it up and you gotta put it in the oven and it takes a whole process and then to get the the, the skin crunchy on that porchetta you know it also takes a little bit of technique so i think that that is a plate that's you know a little bit harder than your usual but I don't know, in general, it's just about, you know, following the steps, following the recipe, doing things one by one, and eventually you'll normally get a, a really good product out of it. What motivates you to be a chef? <laughs> okay, um, I was a little kid, maybe a little bit younger than you guys. Um, everything revolved around the kitchen in my house. My mom used to work. I used to go to school, and so I, my mom would, I don't know, what, like six, seven, eight, maybe, 
she would pick me up and put me on the counter. And me, while she was cooking, uh, she would be asking me about my day. She would be asking me about my homework. If there was something that she had to like, if I had a vocabulary test, or if I had a English test or a math test or something, she would be asking me the questions. Me, while she was cooking, and I would be just sitting there answering, and all those smells and all the bonding time with my mom. I don't know, like, then I had a very special connection with food. And I start growing up, and then my mom would come like, okay, come on, um, let's make a sandwich. Something as simple as a sandwich. And we would make a sandwich together. Then she taught me how to make rice. And by the time I, I had to go to college, my mom taught me, a, like, a lot of recipes because she was worried that I wasn't going to be able to cook myself because at home, Either it was the nanny or my mom that cooked everything for us, so I needed to I needed to learn how to cook when I was going to college and live by myself. And whenever I felt like kind of you know homesick, miss my mom, miss my dad, miss my family, I would make one of them. I would cook one of the dishes that she would always cook, and that and the whole dorm smelled like my mom's cooking. And then I just realized that. You know, the, the, the interest, interesting connection in between smells, in between taste, and how you feel. And I don't know, I, I just, I, I got to love it. But then I decided that it was going to be, that was going to be what I was going to do. I was trying to, I was going to try to connect with people through smells and tastes and stories. Where did you study for culinary school? Um, I studied in two places. I studied in Culinary Institute of the Americas in California, and then I studied in in Panama in a school called um, Academia de Artes Culinarias, and that's where I studied also culinary. What do you decide to make or cook each day? This is an, this it's being a, a chef of a school is interesting. Um, your palates are starting, your palates are evolving. Um, it's interesting that I'm in a place like ISP that has many, many different nationalities. You know, so what you eat at home is not necessarily the same as what you eat at home. What I used to eat at home. So I normally try to give a little bit to everybody. I, you know, like, if you like spicy food, okay, because that's what your mom makes at home or, or you're into spicy food, then I try to have something that you're going to like. If you like more, you know, just rice and chicken, then I'll try to go there. I know we all love pizza, you know, and I know we love burger days and hot dog days, but, you know, we got to try and eat a little bit of everything, you know. we. We have to feed ourselves better so we are stronger and we can learn better and we can play harder, you know, run faster. So, you know, try to give you a little bit of everything um, in different days and, you know, always, you know, I'm thinking of, hey, let's give this, give this kid a treat, you know, so you don't get bored of the cafeteria. So I try my best. But if there's any time that you want to see something or you want to, you know, you want to eat something, you know, you can tell my staff or you can tell me, Chef, you know, we want to eat this. And I'll do my best to to try and, and put it into the menu in, in elementary, middle school, and high school. Here we go. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, what's your favorite food? Um, anything my mom cooks. <laughs> That's that's the real answer, but I it fluctuates. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about poke. Yes. Yes, you've heard about poke. Well, I want to say like two years ago, I went to California. I went to LA. My sister still lives there, and poke was everywhere. And they were, you know, like it's a, it's like a deconstructed sushi bowl, you know, like sushi rice and all the fish, all the stuff, and. Uh, I, I got I got love in it with it, so I was eating poke like five times a week. I just got like I need poke, I need poke, and then I don't know. I kind of got tired of it. Now I like human food. There's this little place. No, it's crazy. Like I, I don't know why, but uh, they have this 
rice and beans. Uh, we got stuff like that in Panama. They got this, you know what ropa vieja is? Yes. Okay, well, ropa vieja is, it's saucy, right? Yeah. They use the same beef as ropa vieja and then like make it stringy and then they fry it. And it's called vaca frita. I think it's a funny name, vaca frita. Vaca frita. Yeah. And I just like, there's this little uh, Cuban spot by my house that makes it amazing. So I think that my, my like my favorite food goes fluctuating. You know, like I eat a lot of something and then I get tired of it and then I eat a lot of something and I'm all excited about it and then I get tired of it and then I go back, you know, and forth. I like, uh, I don't know if you know Thai food, but I like Thai food a lot. It's coconut very spiky, yeah, coconut. It also has a lot of spices in it. So, you know, I, I, I love Thai food with smells and everything. But at the end, you know, like, if I have to choose something, I'm <coughs> sorry. Um, it's me going to my mom's house, arroz blanco, lentils, you know, maybe like a little piece of steak or something. My mom makes some amazing potato salad. That, you know, that would be my like absolutely amazing favorite type of food. Um, how do you feel that you have changed the cafeteria? Well, first, what I've what I've tried to do, um, there's two places, and I feel it's a little bit different. We got the high school and middle school cafeteria. You know, we got the elementary school cafeteria. There's when I got here, I'm gonna be sincere with you guys. I started working on this side first, and now my 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 focus for the next <coughs> sorry for the next six months is. It's um, it's elementary. Um, the menus are definitely something that I've been changing. Um, you guys sometimes are tough to serve food to because like I want to put some parsley and some green stuff on on stuff, and you're like, no, no green stuff, I don't want it, you know. So it's kind of tough for me. Uh, I have to try and go back and remember what I used to like when I was a kid. <clears throat> the problem is that what I used to like when I was a kid was not was definitely not the most healthy stuff in the world. You know, like <laughs> I was like, Mom, McDonald's every day. You know, I don't like McDonald's. I'm, I'm glad that you guys don't like McDonald's. But when I was a little kid, I just wanted Happy Meals left and right. You know, like <laughs> so. So I'm, I'm trying to you know reconnect with you guys. One thing that I did like kind of uh, like that I like a lot is the little. You know, like we have a huge salad bar here, you know, but why shouldn't you be able to choose also like like middle schoolers and high schoolers? So I made a little yes. salad bar for you guys over there, you know, and you can just pick what, you know, vegetables and stuff you want. Um, I, I think I've rotated the menus, you know, like normally you have rice. Rice is a very, you know, rice is a very good meal and there's some, and it's simple. And there's a lot of kids that like it, so that's you know a staple. But I've seen that you know I've been adding diff like a different rotation of beans, and you guys have been eating it, you know, pretty well. Um, you always have two proteins, um, and I try to switch them around a lot. Um, how many sauces? I've seen that you know more of the smaller kids they don't they don't enjoy sauces. The 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 older um, elementary kids, you guys, you know, it's easy to serve you guys, but when you go, when you go younger, you know, it's anything green, anything red, it's like, no, what's that? I don't want that, you know, so. Well, it depends. Pizza, though. Oh. <laughs> red sauce. <laughs> That's true. That's definitely true. Um, but yeah, the menus is something that I have changed um, a lot in both places. Um, and we're working, we're working on trying to make the cafeterias look funner, you know, more interesting. You know, like I painted that wall yellow, you know, just to be a little silly, you know, and, and the name of the cafeteria is the cove, you know, up there. And then now the summer's coming and I'm going to see what I can figure out. Uh, doing something fun for elementary and painting the wall or something, you know. And again, if there's something that you guys want, you know, 
I, I'm not going to promise I can deliver, always. However, you know, I can do my best to try and, you know, get get that kind of stuff for you. What do you, what do you, what do you come up with some ideas? You know, talk to, talk to your peers, talk to your classmates, come up with a list of like, I don't know, five, seven things, and then maybe I can see what I can do. Okay. Can you get potatoes? Potatoes? You like potatoes? Yeah, those delicious potatoes that come in. Yeah, those potato wedges, they're good. Yeah, they're good. I know, but they're deep fried once in a while. I can do, I, what I can do is that I can buy, instead of getting the, because those are processed, you know, like, oh, okay. so, so what I can do is buy real potatoes mm. and cut them in wedges mm. and oven, and oven cook them, you know, with a little butter and stuff and put it back there. More potatoes, I can do that. And then, you know, because deep fried is, you know, like, there's a day, there's a time. I'm, I'm not saying that we shouldn't eat french fries. That's okay, that's perfect. Well, there's, I'm not saying that we shouldn't eat, you know, the wedges, the potato wedges that are deep fried also. There's a time and a place for that. But we also have to eat healthier. You know, so, but I can do that. I, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna put it in the menu. That's a good idea. Maybe you could try air frying. Like big air fry. I haven't found a big air fryer yet. I think the oven makes it like kind of, like works kind of like that. But that's like a very specific uh, cooking I tool. I have one at home, but it's, yeah. you know, have you seen it? It's like a little black box. It's kind of small. Yeah. Can't put a lot of stuff. And it's like 300 of you kids. 300? You know? That's a lot of it, but it could be specially for fifth grade. Oh, yes. Specially yes. for fifth grade? Yes. You might say, like, every week do you guys, like, let's say Monday you get one thing, and the other day, or is it, and each well, week you get the same thing? Well, more or less. Um, no, the menus are ever are always changing, um, but I don't know. I like the, I, I, I don't know why I like the sound of Dim Sum Tuesdays, so I decided to every Tuesday, you know for a fact that we're going to have this type of food in the morning um, but there's a website uh, the isp.edu.pa in the website there's some there's a there's a place where you can check out the menu and it doesn't say, say exactly everything that's gonna be put in the cafeteria but it says the big stuff so that's where you can go and check it thank you thank, thank you. you you're welcome thank you and remember remember <laughs> <laughs> Go talk to your classmates. Bring, uh, talk to Miss Hort Mr. Horton. Bring a list, you know, and then maybe before the school year ends, I can do something special for you guys.